Hello everyone, this is LEGO's Spider Mech versus Venom. A lot of people ask why. Why do toy companies keep making mechs and vehicles and aircraft for superheroes and supervillains for that matter who don't use them officially, canonically? Well, the answer to that is very, very simple. They can be fun to play with at least when they're designed decently, and certainly LEGO has made some missteps in the past with some of their mech designs that have not been particularly fun to play with because they've been very stiff and limited in how you compose them and how you can make them do things that you want them to do. Uh, this one here, well, it doesn't have knees. Everybody always complains about mechs that don't have knees, but for a mech of this size, I think that's perfectly fine because they do have two ball joints for the lower extremities and they have nice wide and long feet that allow you to get into some good action poses. And you, can, you also have enough friction in there to be able to balance on just one foot if you want pretty easily. You can always, you know, mess around with the articulation however you want with the posing, get it all completely wrong and then just put the feet onto the ground, push them down, and then you're ready to just leave it as is. And it'll just stand. That's that's all I can ask for personally. And this almost looks like it has knees. It's got some nice dynamism in the, the shaping as viewed from the side there. I don't like the look from the inside, but here that's, that's actually kind of cool. It looks like it has linkages in there and everything. And then the arms are even better. The arms have two ball joints. One is at the shoulder and it's aligned thankfully in a good way so you can actually use that articulation uh, sometimes lego puts these exact joints into some necks in in configurations that don't allow <laughs> them to really be moved around all that much this can be rotated around all sorts of ways which is just super useful and you get the ball joint down here which has enough room around it to still be able to move even in and out a little bit you can rotate it this way and you can bring it across like that so you can shoot across the body a bit you know off to one side you can bring it out fairly wide there are a number of options here that are very useful you can rotate the whole thing around and i think it looks pretty decent at that these can be seen as kind of gears but i think they're intended to be ammunition things that you fire off from the stud shooter which has a couple of web elements that are pre-built where did i put the other one there's another one that has a stud stack on it just so you can attach it to a stud shooter like that so you can fire that off from here or you can use these that's why they have the stud embedded into them just do like so and those will fire off that works pretty well i mean i didn't pose this intentionally at all and it just kind of stays like that so that's pretty good meanwhile over here you have an even even more articulation with this arm with the kind of claw with the four web emitters that can be used to grab on to things a little bit like that and each of these work basically like fingers you can open them up close them change these around change the configurations of what web elements you use in there you can also use some of those round elements to create more of a, a basket sort of look it's it's just it's just good from a play perspective these here these roll bar elements also come from the web blast pack but you know here they're intended to be used to hold spidey in as he presumably jumps around quite a bit and gets very agile with this thing but you could swap those out or use them as ammunition if you want as well you know use them in conjunction with some of these pieces or replace them and just have him standing on there because he does not actually need these bars to be on there at all he's standing on a couple of studs down there and he has a couple of control sticks in his hands uh, the only thing that i really don't like about this mech is how it looks around the back it looks incomplete at least the color scheme is pretty consistent through and through you don't see yellow and green and stuff around the back and around the sides like uh, you you often do oh as i say that it's just a tiny bit yellow down here but that really doesn't bug me but i think uh, just a couple of inverted tiles back here on the back or even just no, I, I would like to see at least a couple on the back to make that look just a little bit more complete a little bit more finished in the set description lego officially refers to this as a venom mech and i don't know if there's ever been a canonical venom mech 
I'm going to go ahead and assume that there has not been such a thing because it makes even less sense in universe than a Spider-Man mech. It's less needed, uh, less useful, but there are some good ways that you can think of this that make it make more sense, I think. Because look, you have a full large Venom head and face here, but then you have a Venom figure up on top. So what's going on there? A couple things are possible. For one, it could be two different symbiotes, right? That are working together and uh, they're just communicating directly through neural pathways with just some connecting tissues there. Or it's all just one single symbiote. And, you know, this is the, the human body based or humanoid body based portion of it. And it has just uh, multiplied out its its cells and expanded its biomass to this huge thing and it is just kind of held on to a part just because it feels like it because it can and because it's kind of crazy uh, so the whole thing is all just venom you can see it as or you can see it as two uh, two symbiotes however you choose to look at it it's pretty impressive to look at and if you hate this idea of having the minifig up top just leave it off completely now how does this one do for articulation as a mech as a toy well this pose right here is pretty good. You can move the tongue around. That's pretty creepy. Very creepy, yes. Can't open the mouth and close it. That's too bad. I do like the fact that this is a print here, and it seals up pretty nicely around the corners. You know, this is a uh, CCBS large action figure uh, armor add-on piece, typically used for shoulder armor. Here's a unprinted version of the same here. I use it on either side. But for articulation, Ball joint here, good. Large one, gives you decent range. And then you have a small ball joint at the elbow. Let you come all the way in here and pick your teeth a little bit. You know, sometimes stuff gets stuck in there. So you need to be able to do that. Check this out, rotating wrist. I love that. I love that. That, that adds so much to what you can do with this. And exactly how you can set up poses. It adds so much. You can move these little tendrils around as you want and change which pieces are connected at which point what at what points or at which points these arms just work so well with that rotating wrist i really like that i want to see rotating wrists on every mech from now on of this size or larger from mech, from lego because they can do it and they have done it here and it works great don't like the blue but i can live with it because this is just so useful you can of course move all of the fingers individually keep that uh, that uh, little finger up i need to give him a, a cup at this point a teacup is what he needs in his hand there what about our uh, legs i took care of the arms oh he's got the ratcheted joints he needs those for extra strength and stability let's see if this will allow him to get into a moving pose it's limited front to back and just what you can do with it but you can make it work can make it look like he's he's moving a little bit it's just a little bit lumbering as opposed to kind of a, a a leaping charging pose but let me see if i can get him on his toes at the back see this is able to to rotate side to side at the at the ankle you know, more so down at the foot to make sure that this is always on the ground nice and flat and that limits you a little bit in what you can do here but let's see i'm just trying to see if i can get something a little bit more extreme there we go so it's on the on the toes you know you have to work with it a little bit but it is possible at least and you can also splay those out that can help quite a bit to get some more dramatic poses let's see if i can get them to balance a little bit better yeah so that's that's pretty cool and again the color scheme is pretty consistent all around it you do see the undersides of some surfaces here which aren't the best looking in lego but not bad i love the 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 round shape of the leg here that's really nicely done if you're not going to have knees at least have some sort of dynamic st static pose dynamic looking physically static pose in it and this looks really good and just is pretty smooth i could have done without some of the white there personally but that's just I don't know, it's a choice i know it was done intentionally i don't know why though got some white under here as well i like these claw pieces that add just a little extra texture on it i don't mind the exposed studs maybe the top two could have been covered up but i mean it's on the back of the lower leg this is much better as viewed from the back than the spider-man mech is because they actually put some some pieces back there left a little bit of it just fairly plain but 
this helps so much and just builds up that that upper back musculature and I can bring these around if I want to pull them push them forward I think I can make that work a little bit better but this is fairly stable the arms work great I think it looks fantastic on display and there are a lot of poses you can come up with and just leave it and you can also play with it pretty decently this one does not play as well in my opinion as the spider mech just because it has all these little things and if you get too rough with it some of these little things can eventually pop off but i guess they're yeah you know some of them will slide off and uh, there, there are some situations where the clips will pull out also you have to worry about balancing it just a little bit more because you don't have the ball joint down here to be able to just push it down and have it completely flat but it's it's pretty stable looks really cool these are stickers up in here one of them you barely see but uh, I think those add a lot. That's a print, and that's that. Let's move on. Here's Ghost Spider on her hoverboard. Of course, we'll take a closer look at the minifigure by itself in a minute, but the hoverboard is a fairly simple build that looks pretty appropriate. It has a couple of stud shooters on the front, so once again, you can use these things or you can use the small metallic spiders off the spider mech to fire those off, or you can just use the studs that are included and kept loose. This ghost spider right now has in her hand an additional web element, and there is yet another of that exact same item as a spare in the set. So you can use those. You can even kind of change those up a little bit to use those as ammunition to fire off from the stud shooter. This is the back, obviously, with the little bit of exhaust there. It's looks looks like it's kind of flaming out. I don't know. It's not not the not the most powerful jet or rocket. I guess uh, afterburner or rocket stream. There's three stickers used on this for decoration. I'm not the biggest fan of the stickers themselves, but uh, I, I, they might be pretty close to how they should be. But that's that. Let's go ahead and take a look at the figures up close. So there are those two with the new 2019 version of comic Spider-Man on the left, which looks pretty good with the dual molded legs in there and the comic style head. Not the best printing on this one in the eyes. It's just a little bit thin but not too bad. Very simple printing by comparison for Ghost Spider. Of course, the, the face is as it should be, but let me take that hood off so you can see a little bit of additional printing on the top of the torso. That looks pretty good. And she has the one element stack to hold on to anything that's bar shaped or stud shaped as a, as a weapon or as a blast item that's coming off. Officially in this set, you don't have a spare of that to use with Spider-Man when he's out of the mech, but unofficially they do have a spare of each of those pieces, the, the clear piece and the white hollow stud, so you could set up Spider-Man to be blasting off some webs as well. And then on the villain side, we get the Venom minifigure and Aunt May. <laughs> you didn't know, did you, that Aunt May actually gets attacked by one of the symbiotes and she becomes the Venom mech. Ha <laughs> ha! Plot twist. No, uh, I just had two more figures to show you, and they happen to be these two. Yeah, uh, Aunt May is just Aunt May. You know, that, that's that's it. Uh, the Venom figure has the dark red to represent the back of the mouth or the inside of the mouth, and the regular red for the tongue. I think that's good. The printing on the front of that torso isn't the best. Around the back, that's fine. I like Aunt May's uh, sweater, but it's unfortunate that her secondary face does show through just a little bit with that hairpiece on there. With the Spider-Man web of blast pieces, they also always include a web handcuff piece. Like, that's going to work with Venom. Well, you can use it with another character if you want, or just go non-canonical or... You know, say that uh, you've you've hit Venom with something that's suppressing his abilities, and, and you can actually just put web handcuffs on him. Eh, whatever you want. It's a toy. Never forget that. I think this is a pretty respectable toy. Pretty cool toy. Pretty fun toy to look at and to play with. And in the U.S., at least, it's 50 bucks for 600 pieces with four minifigs. I think that's a pretty decent deal when I look at. The volume of stuff here and how much you can do with the stuff that's here yes i do think that that's a pretty good deal for a toy play set i personally much prefer the venom quote unquote mech in this over the spider-man one mostly because of the look and mostly because of just the canopy area i feel like if they had done 
a, like an exclusive printed single canopy glass piece, like a bubble canopy with with a, a Spider-Man uh, visor op opening you know, window section on it and the rest of it opaque, then I would have really liked that a lot better. But just this right here, I get it. I know what they're going for. I understand that. And they use the pieces that are already basically included free as soon as you order up for a set. You know, as a designer, you order up a pack of parts that all come together. But I don't like the look of that. Posability is really good. But I like the posability and the look of this one, although it's posability of the the legs is relatively limited. Still very good with the arms. The rotating wrists are great. You have to get it in your hands to really to really feel that, I think, to really understand just what I mean by that and why I say that. But yeah, I, I think this is good stuff. Uh, the, the ghost uh, spider stuff is relatively weak here, but it's nice to get the minifigure. At least, I guess the board to me isn't that great, but it's definitely playable, usable, works with some of the web stuff. Minifig is good to get. Even the extra character is good to get. And overall, I'm happy with this set. There you go. That's it for my thoughts on this one. Feel free to share your own down below, including if you completely disagree with everything I've just said, that's fine. Just be respectful. I'll talk to you again soon.